Hey, gang, welcome back to Florida Powerboat Club here as Stu Jones and Ryan McCoy back in the Pompano Beach studio with more adventures of the Florida Powerboat Club. And this time, guys, we're moving quickly into 2023. We just wrapped up the Miami Boat Show Poker Run with four episodes. Now we've got this entire show packed with our Spring Key West adventure. It took place in March with a much smaller group, about 25 teams leaving for Miami, all the way down through the beautiful Florida Keys to Key West. We've got an exciting show ahead, so before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Doug Wright Power Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, Plantation Boat Mart, SD Marine Group Isla Morada, Statement Marine, and Top Gun Performance Dealers for Cigarette Racing. And like every other event, it all begins with boats, babes, and big horsepower. Of course, we've got it all here at the Florida Power Boat Club on the docks of Grove Harbor Marina in Coconut Grove. And as with every poker run going to the Florida Keys, we kick things off with a poker card dockside. And this is Hugo Prieg and his 36-foot Doug Wright powerboat. FPC girls Ivana on the left and Kelly on the right. Well, of course, we saw Kelly on the last event, but Ivana is our newest addition to the FPC girls team as now Dwayne Reith comes up to the dock with his 34-foot MTI. And Dwayne, it appears, uh, like many of us, have become creatures of habit. He was on this event last year at Spring Run to Key West in 2022, so here he is in 23. So for him, it seems to work out. And it's another 34-foot MTI cat, uh, this time Cliff Anderson and Melissa as they pull up for their card, and they have been on several poker runs in a row. I'm guessing they could potentially set a new record here. I think they've done at least six in a row with the club. Todd Hawley now pulling up to the dock. He's all the way from Alabama. He's come a long way to join us with this 38-foot fountain center console. And I do believe it is the first poker run they've done in this uh, 38 fountain with FPC. So welcome to the club, Todd. And now we're welcoming Ryan and Rachel Garnett all the way from Texas, uh, returning once again with this 38-foot Mystic Cat. It's got a pair of Mercury Racing 400Rs. And I know that uh, Ryan has got his heart set on another cat coming soon, so we'll just wait and see. I think this one's going to go bye-bye, and uh, let's see what he ends up with. And welcome back to Frank Bolte and uh, crew chief Sean Evans. Uh, they've been doing a lot of activities with this 44 MTI. Um, we're involved in the last event, the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, where they won the award for the farthest travel. Well, I think Frank gets that a lot. He comes all the way from France to join us for these poker runs. And one of my favorite 39 Top Guns, this is Bentley Thompson uh, from South Carolina uh, called Team Mad Hatter. Uh, what's cool about this boat, aside from its look, is the Mercury Racing 1100s. And it's another team from South Carolina. This is uh, Dominic and Christy Buscaglia in their 38-foot Scout. I believe it's the first 38 we've seen in a long time uh, with the club. Not their first rodeo. They've done a lot of poker runs with us, but not in this boat. They actually joined Fred and Judy Rivas several times in their MTI on our poker runs. I absolutely love the blue color of the hull sides, and uh, look how it's color matched to the engine cowlings. Are those Yamahas? <laughs> well, I guess the girls are saying it might be a little chilly out here, but believe it or not, it was warmer in February just a month earlier. But they've got a job to do, and that's hand out the cards. So now it's Ron Paul coming up to the dock with this uh, Nortec 390 Sport. This crew is from Illinois, and the Nortec is powered by Quad Mercury Racing 300Rs. And a very special welcome back to Mike Chisuli and his crew, uh, the Maxon team guys all the way from New Jersey in this 39-foot MTI. I love it when these guys come on the run. They're so much fun, and they've been at it a long time with us. So good to have them back. I didn't know that sausage came in an eight-pack. And needless to say, I love having fun with my fellow FPC members. Couldn't help noticing that Kelly is just having a great day today. She's got that little shuffle going, and it's her turn to reach out with the card. And yes, indeed, it's a Subio Verrier and his 34-foot MTI. 
Another guy that's a world traveler. I call him the international man of mystery. His Facebook posts put him pretty much around the globe. This weekend, he's all ours. Well, that's going to wrap up our poker card segment. Uh, Thanks to the guys at Grove Harbor for letting us use their dock. And before we start heading down to the Florida Keys, let me get you guys updated on the Flight 1130 Cigarette Top Gun, sponsored by Mercury Racing. Of course, many of you know by now we rebranded the boat uh, from Project 1080 to the Top Gun Flight 1130 back last fall. Launched the boat for the Key West Poker Run in November and put a lot of hours on the boat as I ran back and forth from Miami down to Key West. Then once again uh, on the January run, the uh, winter fun run to Playa Largo Resort in Key Largo. We had a lot of fun uh, running around in the Upper Keys and then once again Uh, In February, as we all saw in the previous episodes, uh, Flight 1130 came down to Isla Mirada for the Miami Boat Show Poker Run. So that now brings us to our fourth event uh, on our campaign to promote the new Mercury Racing 565s. And here's a shot from uh, last night as I brought the boat down from TNT Marine Center. I was running a little bit too fast and a little bit too close to the shore along Indian Creek, which we all know is a very exclusive neighborhood near Bell Harbor. Uh, 41 luxurious homes and they have their own police force so I got chased down but this gentleman was so kind to me and he gave me a warning and said Stu when you go through here remember slow down and stay well off the shoreline when you're passing through Indian Creek and about 20 minutes later uh, when I got into Biscayne Bay uh, I happened to see this uh, Coast Guard Uh, it was really a test drill uh, where they were rendezvousing uh, with the helicopter uh, and the Coast Guard cutter and you'll see, if you look closely, you'll see the basket is uh, dangling. That's a safety basket, uh, for rescue basket, uh, stretcher for, uh, you know, obviously an on-water rescue. Uh, they have to practice these drills quite often. I just happened to be out here when they were in the middle of a drill, so I thought I'd grab this on video uh, just to show you that the United States Coast Guards are always uh, training and always preparing for on-the-water rescues at all times. So just thought it was a cool shot. I uh, kind of got in their way and got a little warning from them to get the hell out of their way, but I uh, wanted to share this with you guys and uh, thank our servicemen and women with the United States Coast Guard. And now back on flight 1130 as we head southbound uh, towards Key Largo. That's Matt Neely and his crew from Matt's Sports and Ammo. They came down from Michigan to join us. His wife Liz in the green top as well as Chad and Danielle DeVrent. And remember now, this is a much smaller event than our typical Key West run in November, which has well over 200 registered teams. I think we're sitting at right at 25 registered boats for this run, which really makes it ideal in the sense that we're going to have a great level of camaraderie. We're going to get to do things that we wouldn't normally be able to do with such a large group. Uh, But of course, uh, we're still going to enjoy these scenic waterways like arriving here in Jewfish Creek. Uh, as we now close in on that's the US one bridge in the background here and of course where are we gonna stop for lunch you guys know it exactly it's gonna be Gilbert's and once again we are the official chase boat uh, on the run we don't try to be a front runner we certainly are not the fastest of the fleet I like to run at the back of the pack at about 60 miles per hour an ideal speed for this big heavy cigarette v-bottom straight bottom top gun And over the years, I have come to uh, prefer that format because it allows me to stop and help out anybody that has had any problems along on the course. And all settled in here at the dock at Gilbert's and with such a small group, plenty of docking for everybody. Uh, And thanks again to Gilbert's for holding all that dockage open for us. It really gives us a chance to get tied up and 
and settled in here for lunch. We're going to make this about a 90-minute stopover. Remember, we still have about 110 miles to go from Key Largo down to Key West. Then we like to give ourselves at least two and a half to three hours for that ride. And that usually means getting off the dock here by about 2 p.m. Now, remember, uh, in November, it's dark at 5 p.m. So we like to push off the dock here from Gilbert's by about 1.30 p.m. Now, at this time of the year in uh, late March, it's not really going to be an issue. We can take our time and enjoy the ride down to Key West. And once again, a very eclectic mix of performance boats here. That is an old school Top Gun off on the right, Alan Lima's boat. Uh, Mike Lopez got himself a new 42-foot MTI. This will be the first run for him. Bentley's 39 Top Gun on the inside. And then look at this big row of center consoles and obviously strong showing from Nortec high performance boats. There's that Fountain 38 on the outside. I think we have the Scout 38, but clearly a trend uh, that is developing and very strong trend as we see more and more performance center consoles attending these poker runs. Well, we had a wonderful lunch and we're back on the waterway now and uh, back on board with the Flight 1130 cigarette. And this time I wanted to get a jump on the fleet because I had an idea of getting to a vantage point here in the Florida Keys where I could get all the boats as they went by and get some nice video shots from my iPhone. So that's my plan and that's what I'm doing. Remember, we don't have a helicopter booked for the run down to Key West. We've got it signed up in Key West when we go out to Boca Grande. But this was just a, a cool opportunity to get the boats as they pass by in the Florida Keys. I know some people thought that we were broken down like John Stella, and he's like, oh, we better go help Stu. He looks like he's broken down. I'm like, no, no, John, we're not broken down. Keep going. I'm just taking pictures. Come on, <laughs> pick, pick it up a little faster, a little faster. There we go. Oh, here comes Bear Christensen, and he's like, oh, Stu, you got a problem? Here, we come in here to help. And <laughs> I'm like, no, we're okay, but I will take a look at all your gorgeous ladies while you pass by. <laughs> Undad's 50 MTI. What a great crew that was and uh, Todd Hawley in his 38-foot fountain. So you get the idea, guys. This is something that we like to do when we don't have a helicopter, just kind of sit in the water and wave at everybody as they go by. Day two now of our adventure. It's Friday morning and uh, St. Patty's Day here in Key West. So you can imagine all of the shenanigans that were going on on Duval Street the night before and pretty much throughout this weekend. Here at the Conk Republic Seafood Company, our home away from home and of course headquarters for all Florida Powerboat Club events in Key West. Uh, got the boats all jammed in. Uh, everybody fit nicely. This is what I love about this event. We can rent the inside basin and get everybody on the dock here at the Conk Republic Seafood Company. Back in the corner, you can see the white tent. That again is for the FPC. We're gonna have a party there every evening. And a nice shot here of all the boats just nestled into the harbor. We managed to get a drone up, which was quite a surprise to me because the drone restrictions here are pretty intense uh, with the Key West Airport nearby. So our local drone guy, Neil, did a nice job of getting some cool shots here on Friday morning. Uh, before anybody really came to life, remember we're in Key West, guys. Everyone had a late night on Thursday night uh, enjoying Key West. So things are happening kind of slow right now, but certainly a great time to hang around the docks and uh, take some pictures of the boats. And sooner or later, I know that Hannah and her crew are going to be showing up here to give us some help today. And we do have a big fun run plan going out to Boca Grande to enjoy the day. And I think, guys, even my iPhone was a little foggy this morning. Uh, you know, these pictures are not very clear at all. But I had to do a reset on the iPhone to get it working because I knew I had a photo shoot planned. And right on schedule, uh, Hannah showed up along with her new little sister, Emily, who we've never met before. And uh, they took some time to do some photos with me on the boats. And I always wanted to get this shot with Hannah 
in my engine room checking the oil in my Mercury Racing 565. So that was kind of fun. Uh, but nice to have the girls join us for the day. We also had Abby join us. Uh, we didn't get any pictures of Abby this day, but we are going to be going out to Boca Grande with the group of girls, and it's going to be a lot of fun today. So thanks to Hannah and to her sister Emily for putting on their favorite bikinis and doing some nice photos with us here at the Conk Republic. And moving right along now, we're on the other side of the island at the Key West Airport, getting ready to fly in our R-44 helicopter. And the usual excitement here at the Key West Airport is this Delta 737 uh, preparing for takeoff. Obviously another beautiful day, clear skies, and going to be a good day of flying here with uh, Damien in the R-44 chopper. We've got our new uh, videographer, Phil, who is going to be flying with us today, getting the video. I'm going to be running in the front seat. And believe it or not, guys, going to be using my iPhone uh, to capture photo and video today. Well, partly because I'm lazy and partly because, well, you just can't beat an iPhone these days for capturing high-resolution photos and videos. The key, guys, is to having a nice bracket and hanging on tight and keeping a smooth ride. So uh, Lane Christensen here now with his uh, SV50 MTI, 5 Mercury Racing 450s. He actually brought two boats on the run, brought the 48-foot MTI as well. But it's going to be Dad and Son and all their friends going out to the island today on this SV50. Can't think of a better platform for bringing all your friends because you got that big air-conditioned cockpit down below. Bathroom for the girls, and of course, there's got to be a big cooler somewhere. And my producer's note to everyone is, look at how everybody is wearing their life jackets. Guys, thank you so much. Thumbs up across the board. And we really salute all of you for following our Florida Powerboat Club safety guidelines. And I think the obvious things that come to my mind with this picture is, first of all, the beautiful color of the water, uh, the amazing platform they're on, this 50 MTI. They've got so many people on board, I can't even count them. Guys, this is why you own a 50-foot center console. Nobody has to get left back on the dock. And in contrast to the previous shot with uh, 20 people on a 50, well, we've got two people on a 34 MTI now. It's Cliff Anderson with his uh, 340X powered by Mercury Racing 400Rs. Been doing a lot of poker runs with the club, but probably would have to admit that rarely we've seen Cliff uh, battle through these uh, choppy sea conditions here. Uh, just off the coast of Key West heading to Boca Grande. But they're hanging in, uh, they're wearing their life jackets, and they're enjoying the ride anyway. We've got some very seasoned boaters here who do a lot of poker runs with the club. So uh, thumbs up to Cliff and Melissa for putting on a good show here today as we head out to Boca Grande. And the only one that's probably not having a great time today is the little pooch that's in the handbag sitting right behind Melissa's seat. Yes, indeed, that little furry four-legger goes everywhere with them, even on the MTI. And we're back now with Bentley Thompson from South Carolina in this 39-foot uh, cigarette Top Gun pair of Mercury Racing 1100s and just breezing through this chop as he heads out to Boca Grande. And I think we gave him, uh, yes, we did. Uh, the FPC girls, Hannah and Abby, went along for the ride today uh, out to Boca Grande. So we're going to catch up with them just in a little bit uh, as they going to slow down and put on their life jackets for us. And now we're joining uh, John Stella and his crew now on this Nortec 390 Sport. And yes, they did get the memo. They're all wearing their life jackets. At least most of them are, so that's good. Uh, it was important to me, uh, as I said earlier, that we saw all of the teams wearing their life jackets, uh, something that we're really striving for with this club, uh, wanting to put out a good safety message to everyone out there. Uh, these are high-performance boating events uh, in a group setting. So that is our safety policy, and I'm glad when everybody pays attention uh, follows along with the program. Uh, great looking boat, I love the colors. Uh, this was a fully loaded 390 that was a boat show, uh, Nortec 390 I recall a few years back. John Stella absolutely having a blast with this Nortec and his son and all of their friends. Uh, coming on this event now two years in a row, it seems to be a crowd favorite with the Stella family. And now catching up with Ryan and Rachel Garnett and their mystic 38 foot cat, uh, Paramercury Racing 400 Rs. Of course, uh, one of very few of these models that was built, uh, it's been in the club since it was new uh, with a couple of different owners, but 
Of course, uh, Mystic changed up the program with this boat, made it a 40, and have only now built carbon layup uh, Mystic Cats. Uh, but I think they're happy right now that they don't have the carbon layup because it is a little bumpy out here, and that's really gluing the boat to the surface of the water with that extra weight. So I think they're just having a perfect ride here on this Mystic Cat. And, you know, I'm saying that because in a minute you're going to see a couple of other boats while well, we saw Cliff Anderson in his 34 MTI, but we got another 34 MTI that already turned around and went back. And, but in a minute, we're gonna see yet another 34 MTI getting some serious air. So there you go. I think that's the first time we saw them fly. But these images and this video is just fantastic. I really love these conditions, the color of the water, and this boat looks fantastic. And yes, again, another outboard cat. This time it's a Doug Wright 36 Hugo Prig from Miami. And uh, I gotta say, he's uh, gonna be getting on it too here. Of course, Hugo has got some racing experience. He's not afraid to push the throttles forward. But remember, it is not a race today. He's got his wife on board. So he's got to walk the fine line between how good of a show he's putting on for us here in the helicopter and how far his wife can reach with her left hand and whack him in the head. So, you know, that's, I think, a fine line you got to walk sometimes, guys. But he's really getting on it with this 36 Doug Wright cat. Pair of Mercury Racing 450Rs. Great looking boat. But he's already got a new one being built right now. And it was funny because a week after this event, we went up to the Palm Beach Boat Show, maybe two weeks later. And there's Hugo again with the very same boat uh, on a trailer in the show on display for Doug Wright. And he's telling us it's for sale. So he can't wait to get his new one. I don't know what the status is now. But I do know that Hugo loves running this boat. And in fact, back in November for the Key West run, he took his 36 Doug Wright all the way to the Dry Tortugas, 72 miles each way. Uh, so pretty impressive. And now gonna catch up with Frank Esposito from New Jersey uh, in this 42 foot MTI Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. What a great looking boat. I love the colors of the boat. And obviously they're gonna have no problems with these sea conditions today. It's a boys trip uh, this weekend. Uh, and it's uh, the name of the boat is Today's Foreshore, S-H-O-R-E in a direct connection to Frank's home state, which is New Jersey. And I think all of the entire crew are all from Jersey, at least from that area. They're showing off their cool life jackets saying, hey Stu, we're wearing them, we're wearing them. <laughs> well, guess what guys? If you could see me right now, I've got both thumbs up uh, and a big smile on my face. But a great looking boat and a fun team to hang out with. They went all the way to the Bahamas with us the previous summer. And a nasty uh, weed patch they just went through. Seems like a lot of weeds getting blown into the bay here at this point. So everyone's got to be careful not to get those intakes clogged up and uh, overheat the motors. Now, guys, it's showtime uh, as the Subio Verrier gets uh, things wound up here on his 34 foot MTI. Another guy who's not afraid to get out in the open ocean. And regardless of the conditions, uh, he, along with Hugo Prieg, are the two guys that went all the way to Dry Tortugas back in November during the Key West Poker Run. But Obviously, today is a much shorter ride just out to Boca Grande, but he is not holding back <laughs> one bit. Giddy up, cowboy. We came out here to ride, and that's what we're going to do. Not holding back. Whoa! Not holding back one bit uh, as he just uh, stays on the throttles and just puts this 34-foot MTI, which is a super light cat. Obviously, one of the lightest. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that is the money shot for sure, but... Look at, he's not even holding back on the throttle. He's like, no, nope, we came out here to run. We're gonna run. So I gotta thank uh, Subio and his crew for hanging on for the ride and putting on a great show in this very light 34 foot MTI. And now one more time with Bentley Thompson uh, and the FPC girls riding along. And yes, indeed, they have their life jackets on now. Good job, crew. Uh, we did uh, make a gesture earlier to tell them to put them on. So they pulled off on the throttles uh, grabbed the life jackets out of the bag and everybody's all suited up now. So thanks to Bentley and his crew. Looking good in this 39 foot Top Gun. Love the colors. It's a beautiful boat. A lot of you guys have seen this boat on YouTube uh, on the Hallover channel before. Uh, it uh, had a little incident where he, a previous driver, the previous owner to Bentley took the boat through in uh, some really big swells at a high rate of speed and just launched the boat nothing like they're doing today but uh in a way in which some people got injured so today it's more like just uh taming these waves getting to a good speed and a good trim attitude to ride through them and you can see that this 39 top gun is just gobbling up these swells no problem at all and yes again another mti this time it's craig and paula ackerman from georgia and this is a 39 or a 390x uh, mti with 
Twin Mercury Racing 450Rs. A little bit more fiberglass here, or, well, carbon fiber, however you want to look at it. Still a very light boat. MTI publishes uh, their specs as this weighing about 6,000 pounds, and they say the same about the 340. Well, the 340 uh, was that we saw earlier was probably not a carbon boat. Uh, it was more of an e-glass, fiberglass boat. But nonetheless, these boats are extremely light, but Craig is just putting this 390X through the paces, staying glued to the water, though, just uh, getting air when he's uh, running off the larger swells, but really got the boat dialed in nicely and not holding back one bit, putting on a nice show for us here today. And they've really been getting out and doing the Poker Run Tour this year. Uh, we saw them this summer up at the Thunder in the City Poker Run in Maryland. Then we'll join them in their own backyard at Pirates of Lanier in September. And then we're all going to trailer down to Destin and uh, do the Emerald Coast Power Boat Week together. So looking forward to spending some time with the Ackermans. And another MTI, this time another SV42. And count them, guys, one, two, three, four, five Mercury Racing 450s. Michael and Olivia Lopez uh, from the west coast of Florida. Actually, he's from Chicago, but have a home uh, in the west coast near St. Pete. And uh, just took delivery of this SV42 recently. And prior to this, they owned a cigarette and a Sensation uh, 40 CCX. Guys, if you didn't happen to notice, uh, there's a lot of MTIs. Let me give you the numbers. Ten registered MTIs on a roster of 25 boats. That is truly amazing. Well, it seems like blue is a very popular color today. This time it's on a Nortec 390 Sport. Uh, Ron Paul once again here with this uh, new to him anyway, a 390 Sport with Quad Mercury Racing 300Rs. Uh, the boat was delivered recently by Tuppence Marine, a Nortec dealer out of West Palm Beach. Beautiful boat, uh, got the double roll boasters and uh, the long T-top. A great running boat for poker runs. I like the fact that they did the Quad 300s actually I remember attending the launch of the Mercury Racing 300R, and we rode on a boat that was rigged by Bent Marine, a 390, with the same power, and it ran fantastic. And uh, I think that Ron is very happy with the outcome here. He switched up from a 34-foot Sensation Center console. I think he's happy with the move. He's got five more feet and one more motor, so it was a well-timed move for Ron. He's very happy with his purchase and enjoying the boat. Uh, this is his first poker run in the new Nortec. And once again, another Nortec 390 Sport. This time it is Ivan and Kyle Lopez. Uh, also fairly new to the club. This may be their first poker run, if I'm not mistaken. They could have done Key West possibly, but it's a brand new boat. A Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. Uh, Ivan and Kyle all the way from Louisiana. Uh, so they're a long way from home. Team Navivan is the name, and that is the name of his company. He's an exporter uh, dealing with uh, South American markets. So he's a very busy guy in the transportation sector. So he says when he works hard, it's nice to get out and play on the boat. And he does like playing on this Nortec. And for him, that means going fast. But I think Mom is on the other side of the helm, keeping him in check, but not seem to be having any problems today. They're running nicely through this chop. I think that's one of the things that everyone loves about their Nortec uh, 390 Sport. It's a 10-foot beam got a nice sharp entry uh, step tall so it just rides nicely up on top of the water and handles these swells with relative ease great job Ivan and now we're gonna join up with uh, Dominic and Christy Biscaglia in this 38 foot scout uh, and she is uh, stout if I can use that word a wide beam heavy layout boat and you can see unlike the Nortex we just saw this boat is not going over the water but through the water Indeed, and understand, uh, you know, that is one of the attributes of a scout. It's just got a big, heavy layout, a big flare on the hull. You'll never get wet on this boat. Uh, 38 feet, but probably a 15,000-pound boat before you add fuel and people. So we're talking about maybe 19, 20,000 pounds uh, of this uh, fiberglass just crushing through the waves right now. And once again, thumbs up for wearing those life jackets. And now time uh, for the money shot as we get up high here at Boca Grande Key. Once again, the place that we cannot go in November because while it seems very, you know, open and spacious and, you know, lots of room to put boats. Well, guys, I can tell you with 200 boats on this beach, it fills up really fast. And the wildlife officials here decided that uh, that was just too many boats, uh, too much stress on the environment, the birds and the butterflies and all that stuff. So... Uh, here it is, uh, March. It's our one chance that we can all go here as a group, and we pretty much own it today. Uh, you know, it's a Friday morning, 
uh, we made that decision uh, to bring the boats here Friday rather than Saturday, uh, which, of course, because of being the weekend, you'll get a lot more boats out here. So this is a nice uh, way for us to enjoy this day and a perfect day for it. Uh, flying back now from Boca Ground, this is Ballast Key. If anyone remembers the movie with Ryan Reynolds called uh, Red Notice, uh, the final scene of the movie was Ballast Key with Ryan Reynolds, his wife, and his kid on the beach. There you go, a little movie trivia. Uh, landing the helicopter now here at the Key West uh, Airport. Uh, some great flying here with uh, our pilot, Damien, uh, who's been with us many times before, did a great job with us, and uh, we certainly appreciate his uh, safe uh, flying manners as well as his ability to get down in the zone and get us some good stuff. Also welcoming uh, Neil, our new videographer from Key West, who joined us for the photo flight. And somehow, magically, we left the airport, and next thing you know, we're back at Boca Grande. Well, that's exactly what we did. We went back to the boat, jumped on the cigarette, and hot-rodded out here to join the group, and certainly they were having a fantastic time, and this is exactly what we had planned for the day. Uh, Hannah and Abby were able to join us for the afternoon. And uh, so we just kind of wandered around and hung out with everybody and had a lot of fun. This is uh, a scene right out of Power Boating in Paradise. And once again, with our new videographer, Neil, on board, he managed to bring a drone out to Boca Grande with us and got it up in the air for just a little bit to get some nice shots of all the boats on the beach. And this is the kind of stuff that just really brings all the beauty together, uh, the beauty of the scenic environment, uh, of course, uh, the beauty of these incredible offshore power boats. And then, well, guys, let's face it, the beauty of all the lovely ladies that join us for the day. It really doesn't get much better than this, and I can't think of a better place to be than right here with the FPC members at Boca Ground in the middle of March. And one thing I really want to punctuate here is that, remember, with these smaller groups, these are the kinds of things that we can do. Uh, and I think there's a higher level of camaraderie amongst our groups because there's fewer people attending, uh, and it's a very casual mood. And we're at places here like Boca Ground where we can't normally be. Uh, I really think that that puts a lot of points this way towards these smaller events, and I would urge anybody who loves going to Key West to really consider this March spring break run as an alternative to the big November blowout event, which is also great, but it's just an entirely different vibe. And what a great afternoon uh, settling back in here now at the Conk Republic Seafood Company as we all get docked up for the night. And Friday is St. Patty's Day here in Key West, so we're not gonna have any formal events. We're gonna let everybody hit Duval Street. And we do have an FPC cocktail party planned at the Ready Room at Rick's Bar on Duval Street uh, a little later in the evening. Well, the next morning, uh, we really didn't have a big agenda on Saturday. Uh, so we hung out at the resort for a little bit here at the Hyatt. Got a few shots uh, just to remind everybody what a beautiful day it is again. Uh, and anybody that wants to go boating is welcome to do so. And for us, well, we're hanging around at the pool with this uh, little iguana who decided he wanted to get in on the party. I think he kind of freaked out some of the hotel guests. I think they thought it was an alligator. So <laughs> I had to jump in and uh, kind of shoo him off the pool patio because uh, he wasn't going anywhere. I think he was in on the action. He wanted to dive in that pool, and that would have cleared the pool real quick. Well, in addition to the turtle pond and the parrot, well, this iguana proves that the Hyatt Key West is uh, really uh, quite a sanctuary for wildlife. Uh, now, on the other side of the island, speaking of wildlife, south side here, we're at the southernmost point. Of course, it is a landmark location for everybody to stop by and have their photo taken. And, uh, you know, the lines can be very long at times. And remember, this is St. Patty's weekend, so... There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Keeps going, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Well, thank God we're not really technically tourists and don't need our picture, we've got plenty, but that would have been about a 90 minute to two hour wait for us to get our picture today. So we're just gonna stay on the golf cart and take a ride around the south side of the island. 
are really just out for a scenic drive today more than anything else. We got a golf cart provided by the guys over at Hydro Thunder. And thanks so much to them. They provide us with all the golf carts and gem cars and scooters that we need for our poker runs. And uh, this was just an opportunity to get out and do something that we wouldn't normally be doing on the bigger November event. So on this uh, nice March day, we headed over to Stock Island. We ended up going to the Perry Hotel and having lunch to buy the pool. It was just a nice way to kill a Saturday afternoon. And Saturday evening, we're back at the Conk Republic Seafood Company under the big event tent, uh, joined by Abby on the left, Hannah on the right, who are going to be our FPC card girls. And uh, we're getting ready for the big party. Going to play out the cards and give out a whole bunch of President's Choice Awards. Congratulations to Ivan and Kyle Lopez for winning the Best Center Console Award for their Nortec 390 Sport Team Navibon. And the best performance fee bottom went to Bentley Thompson from South Carolina with his 39-foot cigarette Top Gun, Team Mad Hatter. And the best dressed team went to Dwayne Reith for Team Fly MTI with their matching red team shirts. The most enthusiastic team went to Dominic and Christy Buscaglia. Here's a shot with the entire crew. The 38 Scout Team Chum Lord. Mike and Olivia Lopez won the Best Paint and Graphics Award for their new 42 MTI Team Bad Choices. And the Member Appreciation Award went to the family teams of Cliff and Melissa on the left, Roger and Pam on the right. Uh, the Andersons have been doing several poker runs together as a family, and they have an amazing attendance record of doing several poker runs since last summer. And a special thank you to our new sponsors, uh, Matt's Sports, that is Matt and Liz Neely on the left, along with their friends, Chad and Danielle DeVrent. They're all from Michigan. Broken Propeller Award went to Frank Bolte and crew chief, Sean Evans. They didn't break any propellers. They just had some problems with their electronics that put the boat down for a couple of hours. And the Good Samaritan Award goes to Ivan and Kyle Lopez and the Nortec for helping out their friends Ryan and Rachel Garnett in the 38 Mystic. And it's time to award all of our Poker Run winners. Third place went to Hugo and Tamara Prieg and the 36-foot Doug Wright Cat. Congratulations to Asubio Verrier and the 34-foot MTI for taking second place. And taking the honors of first place goes to Ron Paul from Illinois with the brand new Nortec 390 Sport, Team Nothing But Time. Well, I would have to say for a recap, all in all, it was a fantastic day and a wonderful evening here at the Conk Republic Seafood Company. Thanks to all of the staff there for rolling out the red carpet and giving us a fantastic venue for our party, as always. And the best part of this four-day weekend is, of course, the fourth day. Well, it's not over on Saturday night, guys. It's not over till we get home on Sunday. And we've got a nice ride back all the way from Key West where my entire crew joined me. And we had fantastic conditions for the first leg from Key West to the Baya Honda Bridge where we passed through uh, into very calm, beautiful waters on the Bayside. And we took a ride up to Isla Mirada where we stopped for lunch at the Postcard Inn. And I think that the Michigan crew really enjoyed getting a chance to see some of the other sites along through the Florida Keys on our trip back. And just another quick stop over at Gilbert's, uh, you know, I think it's against my rules to pass Gilbert's without actually stopping in. So we just made a quick pit stop and uh, said hi to everybody. A bunch of our other club members had stopped over there for lunch and fuel. And then we made our final ride back across Biscayne Bay. I dropped off my entire crew back at Grove Harbor Marina in Coconut Grove, but I still had a long ways to go home to Pompano Beach. So I got offshore and enjoyed the ride, a little bit bumpy. So I dropped uh, my Bravo XR drives down deep into the water and dropped down my Mercury Racing 380K planes uh, 
deep enough that the boat took a nice uh, level ride attitude, still bouncing around in these waves, but just uh, m- nursed my way up through the coastal waters all the way to Pompano Beach. Somebody actually took a shot offshore and got me as I was going up the beach. I forget who sent me this, but thank you. Uh, but otherwise, guys, a fantastic weekend, four days in the Florida Keys with the Florida Powerboat Club. It doesn't get much better than that. But remember, there's plenty more to come because right around the corner, we have got the Tampa Bay Poker Run, a big event with over 70 registered teams headquartered right downtown at the Tampa Convention Center with all kinds of boating destinations throughout the Tampa Bay area. It's all right here on our Power Boating in Paradise TV, a.k.a. Florida Powerboat Club on YouTube. You can't afford to miss the next episode, guys, so be sure to click that notification bell so you'll get a message when the next episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events in 2021, as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club, and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page, and you guys know who you are, and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.